Welcome back to another video on my channel and this time it's not about professional photo gear, it is about two smartphones who both caught my attention. And the first one is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra which just hit the market and the second is the Huawei P50 Pro which also just hit the market. Both phones deserve a detailed review of their camera systems because they are not only highly sophisticated but also highly capable and in the course of the next weeks I will post my impressions, I will also in detail explain some of the features of these phones. For photographers of course, I'm not focusing on other properties of smartphones, just the camera system, just photography, image quality, in particular image quality at night. I will also do a more technical review of the S22 Ultra when it comes to what Samsung calls nitography and that is a new word, it's an artificial word but clearly it catches my attention and I will look into it and also from a technical side explore it. This video here is all about a moon zoom and I did this many times on my channel with professional gear, with smartphones and so far Huawei always was superior to Samsung phones when it came to the insane digital zoom these phones offer these days. In this video this will change, let's get started. The camera system of the S22 Ultra from Samsung has a lot of lenses. It's actually a quadruple system in the same way as what we'll see in a moment on the Huawei P50 Pro. And I want to quickly walk through these lenses to explain what we are dealing with and I will do the same with the Huawei P50 Pro. And here I can already say this camera system and the lenses have been developed in collaboration with Leica as you will see in a moment on an engraving which you can't see here because of the hard case I've put on the phone. And I also for the sake of comparison did shoot the moon in the same time window on that particular evening with the Canon EOS R5 and the Canon RF800. And that is a telezoom lens which is highly affordable. 800 millimeter with a wider open aperture, so this one here has a constant aperture of f11, would cost you between $15,000 and $20,000, whereas this lens here has a price tag of only around $800, so it's quite affordable. And clearly 800 millimeter takes you very close to the moon and the Canon EOS R5 is a highly professional and very capable camera. So for the sake of comparison, I also did shoot the moon with that camera here. And I'm going to show all sample images so you can get your own impressions. And now let's look quickly into the specs of these two camera systems here. So let's have a look at the first camera in this quadruple Samsung camera system. It's an ultra wide angle lens, the resolution is 12 megapixel. We have a field of view of 120 degrees and we have a fixed aperture or constant aperture of f2.2 and by the way whenever you change the background blurriness by tweaking some aperture settings on smartphones it's pure computational photography. So we are not talking about an aperture which can be changed like you have it on a normal camera lens. Then the next here is a wide angle lens and that's the primary lens. It's 108 megapixel resolution 85 degrees field of view constant aperture of f1.8 and there is computational photography implemented on the Samsung which is called pixel binning and it bins the pixels 108 megapixel down to 12 megapixel and there is also this fantastic feature which Samsung calls newly now nitography and I'm going to cover this in a separate video because I think this is really well done. And then the next lens here is the telephoto lens. It's a 10 times optical zoom 10 megapixel 11 degrees field of view constant aperture f4.9 and it has optical image stabilization which is very useful if you zoom in 10 times to the horizon. And then the last lens here is also a telephoto zoom, it's a 3 times optical zoom, 10 megapixel resolution, 36 degrees field of view and a constant aperture of f2.4. And with these four lenses I think Samsung is delivering an excellent camera system given that this is a smartphone and not a professional camera like I typically review them on my channel. On the Huawei P50 Pro we also have an ultra wide angle 13 megapixel resolution 13 millimeter and the constant aperture we have here is f2.2. In contrast to Samsung Huawei specifies the focal length which is 13 millimeter here whereas on the Samsung phone the specifications from the manufacturer give us the field of view in degrees. The next lens is a wide angle and that's special here a monochrome lens and clearly Leica has a rich history in monochrome 
sensors and monochrome cameras and this here has 40 megapixel but it is pixel bin down to 10 megapixel for better capturing light the focal length is 26 millimeter and the constant aperture is f 1.6 the next one is a telephoto lens 64 megapixel 19 millimeter focal length so already quite narrow when it comes to the field of view f 3.5 optical image stabilization 16 megapixel output so we're talking here about tetra binning which means that 64 gets binned down to 16, which is 64 divided by 4. 40 gets down on the monochrome lens to 10, which is 40 divided by 4. And that's why people call this tetra binning here. In contrast to what you see on Samsung, where we talk about 108 megapixel binned down to 12 megapixel, which is a nona binning because you divide the original native resolution by nine. And then the last lens we have here is a wide angle lens. That's the primary lens of the Huawei P50 Pro. Resolution natively is 50 megapixel, 23 millimeter focal length, constant aperture of 1.8, optical image stabilization incorporated. And again, Tetra binning here from 50 megapixel divided by four, down to 12.5 megapixel in the output image file. If I would have removed the hard case from the Huawei P50 Pro, you would have seen an engraving referencing the strong collaboration between Leica and Huawei when it comes to the camera systems in Huawei smartphones. And reference is not only provided to Leica as one of the strongest and also oldest and most established camera brands, but also to the very famous Sumilux lens lineup in the Leica camera systems. As said before, this video really is about zooming the moon, taking photos of the moon and testing out the insane digital zoom capabilities of these brand new smartphones. But there are a couple of remarks I wanna make on both phones. Let's start with the Samsung. On the Samsung, you have the native camera app, which is here and all Samsung users know this. There are various things you can customize. So I did drag down actually from the more section here already some apps here like panorama super slow motion slow motion hyperlapse video night and so on you also have in the native camera app a pro mode so this is here and if you go into pro you can do manual shooting in the way many professional photographers will love it but i didn't drag this down here because i actually use a new app which samsung has for some time but not for too long and that's called expert raw that really is a pro app you can choose all four lenses dedicated from the rear side camera system. You can fully shoot in manual mode and it is a fantastic app which stores the images in the raw format. On the Huawei phone, we have the native camera app many Huawei users know. So you also have here a more section where you can actually get additional embedded apps. You also have a pro mode where you can shoot manually and it is not that different, but it doesn't have on the phone from Huawei an expert raw app like we have it on the Samsung S22 Ultra. And that is something I really appreciate because it is even better than the native camera app. Now let's get started. As I said, let's do the moon zoom, let's shoot the moon, and then let's look into all these different features when it comes to photography in separate videos in between my other videos, which I typically post on photography and professional photo gear. Some people might ask if these professional phones can store raw files, why do we go for JPEG in what's about to come when we look into the sample images? And the reason is simple. If you wanna go for raw copies, you find in the settings under picture formats on the Samsung phone, save both JPEG and raw copies of pictures taken pro mode and so on. So you can only save raw images if you are in pro mode, but if you are in pro mode, the maximum zoom you get is the 10 times optical zoom on the telezoom lens. And that's why you cannot go for it. And if you are in Samsung's expert raw app, you can also not go for a hundred times zoom. It's limited to the 10 times optical zoom, which for photographers perfectly makes sense. On the Huawei P50 Pro, the same situation. If you are in the normal photo section of the native photo app, you don't get a raw option offer. 
offered. But if you switch to the pro mode, you get in the upper left hand side corner the raw option, which you can enable and then you can store raw files. But if you are in the pro app and that's the third screenshot here on display, you can only use the optical zoom of the telezoom lens, which is a 3.5 times zoom. And again, for photographers, it makes perfectly sense. If you are in pro mode, you should work with optical zoom only. And that's limited on the Huawei P50 Pro to 3.5 times. Here's the first sample image and that's taken with the Samsung S22 Ultra. And you see already if I crop in to 100%, this is a remarkable result for a smartphone. And if you look quickly into the specs, we see that in the metadata, there is information that the Ultra Rear Super telephoto camera has been used here. So that's the telephoto camera with the 10 times optical zoom. You also get parameters here, the aperture I mentioned in the specifications of the S22 Ultra, it's shot at a constant aperture of f4.9. ISO was chosen to be 50, which is kind of a good choice for a moon because the moon is a very bright subject itself on the night sky and 1 over 250 seconds exposure time. And the resolution is 4K times 3K, which is exactly the 12 megapixel we get in the output image from the tele lens. Moving on to the next image, the only change is that here this is as the image came out of camera, JPEG image as I explained before, because no raw option if you go for a larger zoom here. And then this is after post-processing and you see a bit of a difference if I crop in. So this is the original file and then post-processing makes it a bit more crisp and I did this of course in Lightroom in the usual way. Let's crop out again and let's go to the next image and that's now 100 times space zoom or 100 times digital zoom on the S22 Ultra and for a smartphone this is a remarkable result. I've reviewed Samsung Galaxy phones before on my channel never has the result been as good as what you see here on display and then doing a little bit of post-processing emphasizes the structure of the surface of the moon and I think this is the best I've ever seen on a smartphone so far but clearly we have to wait for a moment to also look at the Huawei and do the comparison which is the topic of this video. Here one of the shots from the Huawei P50 Pro and in the metadata you see here it's the same settings in Lightroom which I use for the Samsung but I don't get that many data points here. What we see is a one second exposure the aperture I showed before in the spec sheet of the Huawei P50 Pro and the resolution is 4.6K times 3.5K which is all in 16 megapixel which is the output image size I showed before on the specs of the P50 Pro. Cropping into the image to 100% it's nicely revealing the structure of the moon surface and doing some post-processing it looks even better and again for a smartphone in the same way as we saw it on the Samsung images, this is a really good result. The next image is uh, again cropped in already to 100% now. So this is the original, this is 100%, is at give or take 30 times magnification. Very nice image and if you tweak a little bit in Lightroom, you get nicely the moon here represented in an image. I think is a very good result and uh, I think cropping out and then going immediately to 100% we get this representation of the image and doing some post-processing we have then this final result and this is what we now put side by side with the Samsung moon and let's quickly discuss the differences we see in these images. Here you see now the two moon images on the left hand side the Samsung S22 Ultra on the right hand side the Huawei P50 Pro and clearly the image on the right hand side from the Huawei is a bit bigger a bit larger in size because it has a higher resolution of 16 megapixel compared to 12 megapixel on the left hand side which is the Samsung side and both images coming from a smartphone look really really good. I'm happy with that result. I think it shows that the digital zoom on these type of smartphones is no longer just a gimmick. You really can make things visible which you can't see in that detail with your naked eyes. What you also see is that uh, and that's my subjective impression now that in the center of the moon, I think the Huawei representation is a bit better. I just like it more, but in the corners here, if you go to the borders of the moon, I think the Samsung reveals more details. In particular here, you see these little bit washed out craters at the lower right hand side of the moon, but they are really there because we'll look in a moment into the image with the Canon EOS R5, which I took right after I shot with the Huawei P50 Pro and uh, you will see that there is a lot of structure to recognize which the Samsung is giving credit for. The Huawei is washing it out but on the central surface of the moon I think the Huawei looks a bit better. Maybe a question of the slightly higher resolution, maybe something else. Clearly the Canon EOS R5 
is a totally different beast and I have it here in front of me. And if you look at the image coming from the EOS R5 with the RF 800 millimeter lens with a fairly closed aperture, constant at F11, but that doesn't harm in any way a moon shooting, you see a professional image of the moon with much more structure, much more details. And clearly you see here in the lower right hand side, the structure of the craters, which are indicated and somehow there, if you look into the Samsung image, but which are washed out on the Huawei image and I did actually shoot the Huawei images in between my shooting with the Samsung S22 Ultra and the Canon EOS R5. So there was not a sudden change in weather conditions or all of a sudden coming some haziness into the image. It's really the case that on the Huawei it's a bit washed out, on the Samsung it is there, but it is far away from what you see in terms of details and structure here on a professional moonshot. Here are all three images side by side and I should say and I'm also convinced in what I'm going to say is this is huge progress on the digital zoom front of smartphones as they hit the market as of today. I've not seen a moon zoom as well done as this one here on the S22 Ultra before on Samsung smartphones and Huawei always was good for quite some years in getting the digital zoom converted into a nice picture of the moon and here we also have a good result. There are a few differences as I mentioned before on the Huawei I like the center of the moon better and on the Samsung I like the corners of the moon better. Clearly they are both no match for a Canon EOS R5 but all in a good result and proof of concept that digital zoom is no longer a gimmick only. It's something you might really want to use from time to time. I hope you liked that video and it provided some insight what you can actually do with this insane digital zoom incorporated in these capable camera systems in both phones from Samsung and from Huawei. What I will do in the next weeks is I will in particular make a technical video on the Samsung S22 Ultra and explain how nitography as Samsung calls it is working and what you can do with it. I will also do some live simulation so people can really see what the system is doing and I will also look in more detail into the Huawei P50 Pro because that camera system which was developed in collaboration with Leica is of course very interesting for me as a Leica shooter. I would not go as far and say you get here a Leica camera incorporated into a phone but also the last years if I look back into some of the smartphone videos I posted on my channel the Huawei phones were always very capable and by the way at DxO Mark at this point in time the P50 Pro is at the second rank in the smartphone ranking when it comes to photography and cameras. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.